Are you looking for a beach where you can enjoy the sun, sand, and surf in the buff? Well, I've got one for you this time, and we're talking about Apollo Beach Lot 5. But first, if you enjoy the content of this channel, I would ask you to please like and subscribe this video. Uh, it costs you nothing and it helps the channel greatly. Thanks again for all the support you give. I am talking about Lot 5 Apollo Beach that's located right in the northern part of the Canaveral National Seashore. And yes, this is inside of a national park, so there is a fee. Uh, I went uh, on the day I was there, it was $25 for a seven day pass or because I'm an old fart, uh, I could get a year pass for 20 bucks. So I went that route and you can too. Inside this park, there are no hotels, no restaurants, no homes to, to clutter up the beach. So what you're getting is all natural seashore and ocean and it is awesome. Large sand dunes kind of block your view of the road and, and the parking lot area. So once you get down there, it is pretty much just all seems natural. The Apollo side of the seashore has five access lots. Uh, they're pretty widely spread out. Each one has a restroom and a, a boardwalk access down to the beach. Uh, we're more interested in lot five because that is the one that is clothing optional. All the others require you to be dressed. Um, there are signs, a large sign saying nude sunbathers may be encountered on lot five. So only the oblivious are going to get down that far and go, oh my gosh, you're taking people. So, so it shouldn't be a big problem. I will say though, the, the only downside that I really felt was the parking size. There's only about 36 parking spaces uh, down at lot five uh, and they fill up quick. In fact, you talk to the locals, uh, the regulars down there, and they say if you come after like 8.30 on a Saturday or Sunday, you're not going to get a parking spot. Uh, at the end of the road, there's a, a little cul-de-sac, uh, so it's easy to turn around and come back. And again, the regulars, uh, when they get down there, if there's no parking available, they will just queue up inside that cul-de-sac and wait for a slot to open and just, you know, kind of take turns there. Uh, thing to be aware of is you should not park in that cul-de-sac or you may have your wonderful trip screwed up by a parking ticket or at worst case, a towing. And that would, that would ruin the day. Uh, also across the road, there's a, a boat ramp uh, for people to put their boats in the other side. And uh, this is not for lot five parking either and can get you in trouble and a ticket. Up the road a little farther to the north is lot four. There's another 26 parking spots there, but I will tell you it's over two miles away. So it is, it is quite the journey. That's gonna be tough lugging your beach umbrella and such uh, that distance. Uh, th though some people do it. The smart move I saw was some people brought bicycles, they parked in lot four and just biked down to lot five and, and everything worked fine. And I would say that is awesome insurance against getting stuck uh, with no parking down there on your day out to the beach. I actually got lucky the day I went because several people had decided to leave just before I got there. And so there was one spot open that I was able to get. So I was very fortunate and, and very appreciative of the fact that I got to park there so easily. Now, the other side of that coin is the fact that this beach will never be overcrowded. With the parking as it is, you can only really get so many vehicles in there. So unless people are bringing vans full of souls, then, uh, then you should be all right. And the beach is huge. Uh, when I went down there, there was, there was a lot of space available uh, between people and, and it, just, it was just a really nice time. There was a few surf fishermen and the rest seemed to be made up of sunbathers and swimmers. All beaches have boardwalks with ramps on both ends, so they are wheelchair accessible, but you're gonna have to plan ahead and try to figure out how you're gonna get from the end of the ramp out to the water or, or down to your little area that you set up on. Also be aware, Lot 5 has no running water, and while there is a restroom, it is of the more primitive chemical type that, that if you've been to national parks days past, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so, so leave your pooping at home and, and just come down there. Though they do serve in a pinch, and they're as clean as I guess they can be being a, a chemical toilet. The walk down the boardwalk was beautiful. There are, are grasses and flowers on both sides, and it opens up into a vista where you can slowly see the, 
see the surf coming in as you get closer and there is a seating area up in the boardwalk so if you don't want to get sand in your in your britches or in your shoes then you can just sit there and, and enjoy the view so to speak uh, the beach is really not visible very well from that sitting area uh, so you don't have to worry a whole lot about clothed gawkers the beach itself is is sand and and a lot of little tiny broken pieces of shell uh, it's, it's a little more coarse than sand you're going to see in the more touristy beaches uh, and it, it never really compacts where it's easy to walk on as such, even down by the water. With that said though, it was, it was soft on the feet and, and not bad. Uh, the biggest problem I had with it was those little flakes would stick to your skin and they took a little bit of effort to get off. Uh, not to say that you're going to be branded forever but just, just be aware that, that, that cleaning yourself up may be a little more difficult than what you're accustomed to. The water entry into the ocean is very gradual slope. Uh, there's no great drop-offs as, as a surprise. Uh, the water was a little bit cool, but you got used to it really quick, especially when the sun's beating down. From what I saw on my trip, people tended to spread out a pretty good distance. Uh, there were some that were way down the beach, and as I said, this beach is huge. So everybody has plenty of room. There's not a lot of crowding up and you're not gonna be like, you know, fighting people for a view of the ocean. I'm kind of lazy, so I set up about 100 yards from where the boardwalk came in. Uh, there was seemed to be a higher concentration of people there, even though we still were not very, very close together. Uh, so I, that's where I settled. Uh, there was an eclectic group of people, uh, pretty much all ages represented, young to old, and, and pretty much anything in between. Uh, with exception, I saw no kids down on the beach when I was there. If I had to guess, I would say it was a mix of around two to one uh, men to women. Uh, and I think all the women I saw on this day were, were actually looked like they were part of a couple. Uh, and and uh, some single guys kind of kind of scattered about. There was an interesting uh, group of wildlife to watch. I saw a bunch of little crabs scurrying around in the sand. Uh, there were seabirds. I must admit I don't know the type. There were some that were larger, kind of like a pelican to me. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, and there was a, a lone dolphin that was kind of dancing its way down the shore in front of us. So that was that was really neat. Uh, there were a lot of turtles down around in there. So in fact, you need to watch your step. Uh, so you don't accidentally you know, disturb a nesting area. Uh, there were turtle patrols or, or surveyors, I guess, that were running around and they were finding turtle nesting areas and planting stakes to make it a little easier to avoid these guys. Uh, also, drive slow and pay attention because you don't want to run over turtles. I saw a lot of turtles crossing the road on the way down to Lot 5. The day was a very, very soothing and relaxing experience. There was no noise really other than the surf to listen to, which was good. It was overcast, so I didn't really have to suffer that, that, that blistering sud, uh, but, but when it came out, it really did remind you that you are in Florida, so it was, it was hot out there. A lot of people brought uh, little tents, little nylon tents and beach umbrellas uh, to help with that sun thing, uh, but the wind out there that day made it a little bit problematic. I saw more than one uh, umbrella that was being chased down the beach, so, so you, know, you need to make sure you have a good anchoring plan in, in, in mind there. But nonetheless, you need to protect yourself from that sun. It is, it is uh, easy to burn very quickly, uh, so don't forget the sunscreen. And especially remember to protect those bits that don't see the sun as much as we might like. In my opinion, this beach is, is exceptional. It is awesome uh, with, with the possible exception of the parking. The parking makes it a little rough. Uh, I think bringing the bicycle, as I said earlier, would be awesome insurance. Uh, against getting down there and having a full lot so you could still enjoy your day just go down there chain it up to, to the boardwalk and, and be done the lot four parking lot when i was there was was virtually empty there was not many people down at four so if you had the bicycle option then it, it's pretty easy to find that parking place and come on as far as this trip went i really enjoyed it it was clean as you would expect from a national park uh, like I say, the bathroom is a little little primitive, but that's okay. That's that's not anything unusual, especially in beach life. Uh, but, but it was there. The, the people were were friendly, and it just it's just a nice day all the way around. It was just a treasure of a beach, and if it's something you think you might be interested in, check it out online. There's a lot of resources that talk about it. Uh, in fact, the National Park Service, nps.gov, I believe it is, uh, and, and you can find out a lot about the park. Uh, TripAdvisor has a lot of reviews, pictures, things like that. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So until next time, have fun, and don't forget the sunscreen.